my mom's in it, my mom's sister's in it. My parents met doing theatre together in college uh, with Barry John. We jokingly call, call ourselves a non tanki family. Uh, all the young people in our family started out acting on stage at a very young age. My first play, was, professional play, was at age five. Uh, I played uh, the baby elephant in Jungle Book. I know looking at me you can't believe it but I did. At six or seven I was ushering, I was selling brochures, I was helping out backstage. At nine I was giving actors notes. <laughs> Joyce and Gupta, my friend uh, and, and a co-actor tells me even today very embarrassingly that you know I remember you used to give us notes, you were nine years old, you used to give us notes. So it was, it was you know my mom likes to use the word osmosis but I think you know as everything in life is it was a combination of nature and nurture. Uh, so some of it maybe is in my genes, but it's also in the environment that you're brought up in. There was a play called The Maids, which I did with a director called Pushan Kripalani uh, more than 10 years ago. And it was these two sisters, these two maids and their mistress. And the mistress only appears in one scene. And the kind of work that went into that one show and the thrill of performing it. I remember we performed it at the National Gallery of Modern Art, NGMA, in Bombay. It's a very small space, not very frequently used. It was just the sheer sort of fire and sort of thrill of doing that show made me feel what you just talked about, that, okay, you know, this is what I want to do. As an actor in a film, you are a cog in a very large machinery. Uh, your job is literally from the time you know the camera rolls to the time the camera stops on set and you have to be that prepared. For an actor on stage, it's, a, it's, a, it's an open book, you know, how each show evolves, how each show plays out. Something new happens every time and that's what's exciting. I think we lack venues, I think we lack funding, I think we lack resources, uh, I think we lack a lot of things. We certainly don't lack passion and enthusiasm. It's a catch-22 because if we're not getting funding and we're not getting venues and we don't have the, the national level support that we need uh, and training and education which is equally important because that's when young people have a choice to study theatre professionally. I mean when I went to Yale uh, for my undergraduate, people used to laugh, you know, my family, friends, this, that, older people, so what did you study there? Did you do law? Did you do that? And I'm always like, no, I majored in theatre because I couldn't major in theatre studies in my own country. So, yes, we have to encourage teaching it. We have to encourage every aspect of it. Okay? There are technical, it's not just acting, it's not just directing, it's not just writing. There's production, there's lighting design, there's set design, there's sound, there's so many areas. I think any performance art is evolving. I think art in general never dies. I'm a firm believer of that. I don't believe that you can curb people's creative visions ever. For audiences and for people who are involved in it, theatre is it's you, it's, comes out of pure commitment and love to that form. Um, yes, on one level we must professionalise it. Like I said, there are young people today opening schools, you know, giving it that value, uh, encouraging a new generation of people to come out of these kind of schools where you're getting formal training in it. But at the same time, you are also letting me have a creative voice. When you have the power to have a voice and transform someone's view of the world, someone's perception of their life, their everyday life, or politically, or socially, or culturally. When you have that power, you cannot misuse it. And you cannot let it go. It's like a drug.